When my girlfriend went to the service area restroom, she forgot to disconnect the car's Bluetooth. Her voice messages with her best friend played one by one in the car. She was comparing me to others and planning to test my loyalty with beautiful women. She kept saying she was only playing with me. When I turned around and got engaged to someone else, she cried and begged me. The internet didn't say that. We were just one step away from marriage. How could you give up? During the May Day holiday, I accompanied my girlfriend Rena to visit her parents. On the last day, we drove back to the city at noon. As soon as we got in the car, she complained about my playlist being outdated. She fiddled with the central control panel, trying to connect her Bluetooth to play music. Rena doesn't have a driver's license and has never driven a car. So she soon got flustered. What a crappy car. Why don't you help me? She got angry at me with a nasty face. I had to drive and coax her at the same time. By the time she finally connected the Bluetooth, I was sweating all over. The music was interrupted repeatedly. A three and a half minute song was stopped by notification sounds more than ten times. Rena sat in the passenger seat, busy replying to messages on her phone. She ate snacks all the way and drank a huge cup of milk tea. Halfway through the trip, she became restless. She kept urging me to find a service area. Drive faster. Faster. Don't you know people have urgent needs? Finally, we reached the next service area. Rena rushed out of the car. I rolled down the window, just about to take a smoke break. The music in the car suddenly stopped, and a girl's voice came through. Are you still going to test his loyalty? People can't resist temptation. What if he falls for someone else? Didn't he perform well at your home? Are you still just playing with him? The 22nd voice message got louder and louder as it played. Rena must have turned up the volume in the restroom when she realized there was no sound. When the message ended, the music resumed. Soon after, the music stopped again, and Rena's voice came through. What did you send? Why is there no sound? Victor is willing to give a bride price of 300,000, and my parents are quite satisfied. But the test continues. You have to keep a man on edge. Can't let him think he can marry me easily. After two years of playing hard to get, he barely passed. The message cut off. Probably because Rena tried to listen to her own message and realized there was no sound. What test? Just playing. What does Rena take me for? When Rena returned from the restroom, I stood a short distance away smoking, pretending to be unaware. She got into the passenger seat, saw the Bluetooth was still connected, and quickly got out of the car, looking at me suspiciously. Baby, have you been smoking outside the whole time? I flicked the cigarette butt to the ground and stepped on it, speaking calmly. What's wrong? Seeing no change in my expression, Rena looked away. Nothing. Let's get going. The sooner we get back to the city, the sooner we can queue up at that popular restaurant. Eating. Always thinking about eating. The rest of the trip, I bit back my words several times. I struggled to suppress the anger of being played with. Just got home. I tentatively asked, Baby, what do your parents think of me? Rena didn't answer. As usual, she kicked off her shoes, fanned herself with her hand, and walked into the bedroom in her slippers. I'm tired and hot. Not going out to eat. You go cook. I'm hungry. She had been wearing high-heeled slippers all the way. One facing up and the other down. Both kicked off outside the mat. Usually, I would pick up her shoes and put them in the shoe cabinet. Then tidy up the entrance. Now, looking at the scattered shoes, the veins on my forehead throbbed. I didn't want to be the perfect boyfriend anymore. Rena has always been like this. She looked clean and tidy when we first started dating. But after moving in together, I found out she was very messy. Every time I came back from a business trip, the house was a mess. Leftover snack bags were scattered on the bed. Trash with bugs growing in it wasn't thrown out. Worn clothes piled up on the bay window. And she would pick relatively clean ones to wear the next day. Whenever I mentioned keeping the house clean, Rena would raise her manicured hand and dismissively say, My hands aren't made for housework. Being a considerate boyfriend is the best quality in a man. I'm giving you an opportunity. Kicking aside the overturned shoe, I went straight to the sofa and picked up the tablet. Sure enough, her WeChat was still logged in. Rena likes to play mobile games, although the tablet was mine. She used it all the time, so she felt safe leaving her WeChat logged in. Her chat with her best friend was ongoing. I browsed through the chat history. Rena, speaking from experience, gave her friend a lot of terrible relationship advice, such as men are all scumbags, always test his limits, never lift a finger for housework, only buying gifts brings excitement, you can't be afraid of him. Now Victor is easygoing. But if he argues with me, I would definitely slap him to show I'm not to be messed with. You have to kick them hard in the beginning. She also said she was just playing with me. Seeing me repeatedly bring up marriage made her feel accomplished. And she bragged about it to her friend several times. She doesn't have a job, yet demands I give her gifts every month to satisfy her sense of ceremony. I thought she genuinely wanted to marry me, so I kept tolerating it. Women, a little playful. I could be tolerant, but she was playing me. And these two years of demands and difficulties, 
Constant arguments. We're just her tests. Marrying me isn't that easy. The tests aren't over yet. I found a scumbag tester on Xiao Hong book. He will use a secondary account to tempt him. If Victor stays true, I'll consider marriage. Don't worry. Men want to get married more than we do. Rena came out of the bedroom in her pajamas with a face mask on. Spent the whole afternoon in the car. I'm exhausted. Now, the car is too old. Before we get married, at least buy a BMW 7 Series. Put it in my name. It would look good as a wedding car. She has no job, no savings. Yet she dreams big, I asked. My parents are available anytime. When do you want to go to my place to discuss the wedding? No rush. First agree on a brand new car. A bride price of 280,000. The traditional five gold items. And the customary money for changing the way of address. Rena glanced at me and added. Oh, right. I just found out there's also a custom of clothing money in our area. Just 180,000. What the hell? Does she think she's a national treasure? Raising the price on the spot again. Before the new year. You said the bride price was 180,000. I agreed. And we started talking about marriage. Now you want to double it. Seeing I didn't take the bait, Rena knew to proceed gradually and softened her tone. Baby, I was pampered since childhood. A once in a lifetime marriage. Naturally, I want the best. I retorted. You keep postponing the marriage. What exactly do you mean? She acted coy. What's the rush? If you want to marry me, you have to pass the test. I was tired of hearing this, and my attitude cooled down. Rena. I'm giving you one last chance. Don't try to raise the price on the spot with me. Marriage or breakup. You choose. Rena noticed I was angry but remembered those successful posts she saw on Little Red Book. Naturally, she wasn't willing to settle for just 180,000. She sat cross-legged on the sofa and changed the subject. Let's not talk about this. Go make dinner. I'm hungry. Having gotten my answer, I didn't feel like arguing anymore. I forced a smile but didn't move. Driving was tiring. I don't want to cook. Besides. Since we're not getting married, there's no need for me to cook every meal. I'm not a housekeeper. Hearing this, Rena got upset and forgot all about proceeding gradually. Used to bossing me around at home. She stretched out her leg and kicked me hard. Don't think meeting my parents means you're secure. They don't have a good impression of you. And I even spoke well of you. Now you don't even have the quality of a good boyfriend. Maria's boyfriend drove six hours last time. And he still cooked dinner. Why are you tired? How interesting. She's tired from sitting in the car but I shouldn't be tired from driving. Stop comparing me to others. I interrupted her loudly. Veins throbbing. Break up. Go date her boyfriend. Rena was stunned. She didn't expect that I would yell at her after being okay with such comparisons before. Victor. How dare you yell at me? She threw off the face mask, jumped up from the sofa, and slapped towards my face. I dodged, and the slap landed on my arm, burning hot. Before I could react, she started hitting me repeatedly. I pushed her away. Don't think I won't hit you back. She came at me again. Come on. Hit me if you dare. How dare you yell at me? Rena hit harder and harder, finally picking up things around her to throw at me. Suddenly, the anger I had been holding in exploded, eating my food, spending my money, and still trying to lord it over me. Screw you. We're breaking up. I grabbed her arm with one hand and swung a big circle with the other. Smack. The crisp sound of the slap. The living room was so quiet you could hear a pin drop. Until her phone's notification sound snapped her back. You actually hit me. Rena threw our photo frame on the floor. The glass shattered into pieces. She stormed into the bedroom. Her footsteps loud and heavy. When she came out, she had changed into outdoor clothes and glared at me on the sofa. Break up then. I'll go find a new boyfriend right away. Don't regret it. She grabbed her suitcase and moved slowly towards the door to change her shoes. I stood up. And Rena thought I was going to beg and coax her like every other time. She snorted and was about to put on airs. But I lay down on the sofa in the opposite direction. Take your stuff and get out. Rena slammed the door with a thunderous bang. As Rena's footsteps faded away, I suddenly sat up. My father's message still lay on my phone. Don't forget to bring your girlfriend home for your mom's birthday. I felt very conflicted. From planning a wedding to suddenly being single, I didn't know how to explain this to my parents. I sat alone, smoking half a pack of cigarettes. In the next two hours, I packed all of Rena's things into boxes. I messaged her to come pick up her stuff the next morning. But as soon as I sent it, a red exclamation mark appeared. She had blocked me. Whatever. I stacked the boxes by the door, out of the way of the public area. Then I reset the smart lock and registered new fingerprints. After finishing everything, I went downstairs to eat barbecue and ordered four pounds of crawfish. I used to save money for gifts, never allowing myself to indulge. Now, it felt great. Just then, two new messages popped up on my phone. Could it be the scumbag tester Rena hired? I felt a thrill. I might finally get to play a mind game. Lisa, I heard you and your girlfriend met the parents over the holiday. Are you planning to get married? 
Lisa, did Auntie Wong approve? Well, got excited for nothing. The next morning, in the middle of a business meeting, my assistant rushed into the conference room in a panic. I was about to scold him when he whispered that Rena was causing a scene in the public area. I hurried over. What do you mean by leaving my stuff outside and deleting my fingerprint? Seeing me, Rena raised her eyebrows, her tone threatening. Apologize, or I won't forgive you easily. Seems you've forgotten all those things I said before. I can kick you out anytime. Got it. Rena thought that saying this would make me panic and buy gifts to appease her, as I used to. Before I could speak, another woman's voice cut in. Victor, is it always this lively at your company? A woman in a red bodycon dress and high heels walked through the crowd towards us. She twirled a lock of black hair around her finger. What's this? So in love that you can't be apart even at work. With her striking features and tall figure, she stood out in the crowd. Rena's face changed as she looked the woman up and down. She couldn't believe I had such a beautiful woman by my side. Victor, who is she? No wonder you deleted my fingerprint after meeting my parents yesterday. You found someone new. Shameless. No matter how pretty she is, she's just a mistress picking up leftovers. Her sharp, malicious voice pierced the air. I interrupted her loudly. Shut up. The woman's name is Lisa. She was my childhood neighbor and playmate. She's two years younger than me. As a child, she was a crybaby, always tagging along with me. We grew up together. During our adolescence, there was a period when we had a mutual attraction. I thought that when we were adults, I would pursue her as my girlfriend. Unexpectedly, before high school, she left to study abroad without a word and disappeared from my life. It wasn't until last year, when she reappeared as a sophisticated woman and a client, that we reconnected. In the few years we hadn't seen each other, her personality had changed, and now she always had something to say to me whenever we met. I thought Lisa would be angry when she heard Rena's harsh words. Unexpectedly, she took a step closer, her slender white wrist looping around my arm, and she gave Rena a seductive smile. I've always wanted this, but unfortunately, he never gave me the chance. The second half of her sentence carried a note of melancholy, making it sound like it was true. Drama queen. I pulled my arm away and looked Rena in the eye. Did you forget we broke up yesterday? Your choice. Rena clenched her fists, staring at Lisa, as if she hadn't heard my words. Victor, if I report you for having an affair in the office, you're done for. Lisa sat down on a high stool nearby, her long legs crossed, looking like a proud swan, her expression exuding arrogance. Miss, let me remind you, you two have already broken up. Rena gritted her teeth, an office romance, your boss will fire you. Lisa replied nonchalantly, go ahead and try, if I wanted to. This company could belong to my family. She wasn't lying. Her family owns Yushin Group, a giant in the industry. Buying our company would be easy. Rena's expression changed briefly. Then she regained her composure, convinced she had me in the palm of her hand. Victor, if you want to make up, you'll have to beg me. I gestured for her to leave. Get out. You'll regret this. Rena walked away without looking back. Once she was gone, I remarked, I didn't know you had acting skills. But next time, give me a heads up if you plan to help finally broke up. Who told you to have such bad taste? Lisa moved closer, and I caught a faint, familiar scent from her. The smell was familiar, and I could still feel her touch on my arm. I shook my head and replied sarcastically, as bad as yours, single since birth and still have the nerve to talk. I turned and headed to the office. Are we going to discuss the collaboration or just gossip? I had already thought of a comeback if she continued to mock me, but for a while, Lisa didn't retort, so I looked back. She had a rare smile on her face different from her usual sarcastic demeanor. She seemed genuinely happy. In the sunlight streaming through the window, her fair skin had a slight blush. I could almost see her old, innocent self, quietly. She was indeed a beautiful woman. Just as I started to appreciate the moment, Lisa's smile faded, and she reverted to her usual aloof self. No need to discuss. Just sign the contract. I'm in a good mood today. Earlier, when she was giving me a hard time in the meeting room, she wasn't like this at all. It was the weekend. My mom's birthday. I went back early in the morning, and Rena was already sitting on the sofa. My mom had only met her once and was visibly uncomfortable. Seeing me, she breathed a sigh of relief, pulled me into the kitchen, and asked. She hasn't said a word since she arrived. Is something wrong? I told the truth. Mom, Rena and I broke up. Hearing this, my mom's eyes lit up briefly, but she held back and just said, I'll go cook. You two talk. They had only met once, and it wasn't a pleasant encounter, while Rena was testing me. She also looked down on my parents. My parents aren't stupid, they could sense it but endured it for my sake. While my mom was preparing lunch, Rena had a smug look on her face. Your mom, an uneducated rural woman, must be hoping you'll get married soon. How will you explain our breakup to her? I looked at the expensive bird's nest gift bag by the door. Did you buy this? 
This bird's nest cost at least several thousand. It was the first time I saw her being so generous. Rena glanced at the gift bag. I specifically came to celebrate your mom's birthday. You should take this opportunity to make peace. A slap followed by a sweet date. Not buying it. I grabbed Rena off the sofa and opened the door. Don't come to my house again. Take your stuff with you. Rena had hoped to impress on my mom's birthday and maybe reconcile with me. But she didn't expect me to show her the door before she could say a second word. She didn't want to leave. Turned her face. And started to struggle and scream. Ah. I'm not leaving. Let go of me. Stop pulling me. Victor. You scumbag. Shameless. I didn't understand. She used to leave right after meals. Never wanting to stay longer. Why cling now? Oh no. Don't fight. Don't fight. My mom rushed out of the kitchen hearing the noise. Stepping between us. Son. Talk this out. Rena. Thinking we were ganging up on her. Screamed and pushed us around. My mom was shoved hard. Stumbling back and hitting the shoe cabinet. Clutching her waist in pain. You're all bullying me. She lunged at my face with her nails. Leaving it burning. I struggled to keep my emotions in check. Barely stopping my clenched fist from hitting her. Just then. The door creaked open. Lisa walked in. My mom. Seeing her. Cried out for help. Lisa. Stop them from fighting. Lisa glanced at my face. Frowning. The next second. Two loud slaps echoed in the room. Rena went from manic to stunned. Standing still. Are you clear now? Lisa shook her hand. The swing had made it ache. You dare hit me. Rena snapped out of it. Glaring at Lisa with resentment but also fear. Like a paper tiger. She was always a bully at home. Without the glow of romance. Everything about Rena disgusted me. Breaking and entering. Assaulting the owner. If you don't leave. I'll call the police. Lisa helped my mom to the sofa and dabbed my face with a tissue. She rolled her eyes. Does it hurt? Why even bother about gender now? If you're hit, hit back. I smiled. Isn't that what you're here for? She played along. And I was happy to go with it. Rena cursed a few more times before reluctantly leaving. On her way out, she reached for the bird's nest at the door. But Lisa stopped her. Placing the receipt on the coffee table. The receipt's here. Enough to charge you with theft. Rena gritted her teeth. Avoiding my gaze. Who's stealing? I'm just looking. She slammed the door as she left. In August, Lisa invited me to attend an industry exchange fashion gala. After three rounds of revisions, we finally finalized our product. Lisa and I attended together. We both wanted to take this opportunity to promote our new product within the industry. Many management level individuals from various companies were present at the event. Unexpectedly, I ran into Rena there. The gala had invited many influencers and models to set the atmosphere. Rena, wearing a Chanel style dress, mingled among the crowd, seeing me with two glasses of fruit wine. She was clearly surprised. Victor, you followed me here? I'm somewhat famous now and so pretty. I knew you wanted to reconcile, but it's too late. However, this isn't the kind of place you should be. Hey, where are you going? I turned around, grabbed a piece of cake from the dessert table, and ignored Rena's ranting. Although we hadn't seen each other in the past three months, I occasionally received messages from unknown numbers with photos attached. Some were of Rena partying. Others were screenshots of her account with 50,000 followers on a certain platform. Various photos of gifts and accessories. It was obvious she sent them herself, trying to prove she was doing well and make me regret. Rena's smile grew brighter. You've been struggling since you left me, resorting to working as a waiter to get in here. She hadn't finished her sentence when Mr. Wong from a competitor walked over. Mr. E. Let's prioritize our collaboration. Let me add you, so we can communicate easily. Rena was stunned. Collaboration. Aren't you a waiter? Mr. Wong glanced at her, confirming she wasn't a business partner, and his expression turned serious. Mr. E is a technical expert. How could he be a waiter? Didn't they tell you not to speak out of turn? Rena was momentarily dazed. She had come to attend the gala to liven up the atmosphere. The introducer had emphasized that the important people present were not to be offended. She hadn't had a chance to attend the technical discussions earlier, when we were dating. She never cared about my work, so she never thought I'd be a participant. By the time she looked up again, Mr. Wong and I had already walked away. As a representative of company, Lisa had to socialize with several industry giants. Halfway through, she found me and haughtily asked me, her date, to help her block drinks. In fact, she wanted to introduce her network to me. We greeted and toasted with many moguls of her father's generation. When there was no one around, Lisa raised her glass to me alone. Victor, thank you for accompanying me today. She raised an eyebrow. You look really handsome in this bespoke suit. I like it. I teased. You make it sound like I'm not usually handsome. Even when I'm handsome. Before I could finish, she leaned in and placed a finger on my lips. Don't say hurtful things. You were like this back then. Her words trailed off. Unclear. I asked. Back then. What? She didn't answer. Just propped her chin on her hand. 
staring at me with a dreamy look, seemingly lost in memory. Her deep red v-neck dress highlighted her fair skin, the expanse of skin on her chest alluring, the lights casting a pink hue on her cheeks. Though there were many influencers and socialites at the gala, Lisa's striking looks and stunning figure stood out, drawing many eyes. Maybe it was the alcohol, but her gaze turned a bit ambiguous. You know, sitting here chatting and laughing with you, I've dreamed of this many times over the past five years. We grew up together as childhood sweethearts. How could you have been so blind to choose your ex? Lisa disappeared before the college entrance exam. Four or five whole years. Meeting again inevitably felt a bit estranged. And though I'd wanted to ask her reasons before, I couldn't bring myself to. I took the opportunity to ask. Why did you go abroad without a word back then? Her expression turned a bit helpless. Isn't it obvious? I didn't want the person I like to hate me. Who? I was about to ask more when I was interrupted. Victor. Rena came running over. Her eyes landing on Lisa first. She mumbled under her breath. Why is she everywhere? Then she reached out to grab me. Come on, take me home. I just bought two new dresses, and I want to show them to you. I haven't eaten anything tonight because of this dress. Let's go back, and you can cook me some noodles. Three months without seeing each other. Don't you miss me? I think about you every day. It was as if she had forgotten we had broken up. She continued with her sweet talk, but I had no intention of playing along anymore. We broke up a long time ago. With that, I took Lisa's hand and started to leave. Rena chased after us. Baby. I was wrong. I shouldn't have caused so much trouble, but we've been together for two years. Can you really just let it end like this? I stopped abruptly, turned around, and asked her, then why did you keep raising the bride price? Asking for money for the car, money for clothes, and repeatedly testing me under the guise of proving my loyalty. Why did you brag to your friends about how foolish I was? Did you not care about our relationship then? Rena was speechless. People passing by from the banquet hall gave us strange looks. Victor. Lisa tugged at my fingers. She clung to my arm, her fingers tickling my palm. In a coquettish tone, she said, How much longer do you want to make me stand here? I'm so tired. Hold me. She raised her arms around my neck, and I naturally lifted her up. Even though we were pretending, I felt a strange itch in my heart. Rena glared at us with rage. Lisa snuggled closer, burying her head in my chest. Her Valentino-clad feet swayed. Ex-girlfriend, know your place. Rena could only stomp her feet as she watched us leave. In the elevator, I set Lisa down. She brushed her skirt, a fleeting look of wistfulness in her eyes. Leaning against the elevator wall, she asked, What's going on? Thinking of rekindling old flames. I shrugged. I don't go back to past relationships. Aren't you getting older? Don't you have a serious date? She seemed a bit tipsy, smiling with her head tilted. I wouldn't mind dating you. I took it as a joke and returned to our earlier conversation. Why did you suddenly go abroad back then? She stared at the elevator display, her tone a mix of truth and jest. The person I liked didn't like me back. As a young girl, I was too shy, so I ran away. Who knew I wouldn't be able to forget him all these years? I feigned indignation. Who's the blind fool? I'll beat him up for you. She turned to look at me, a faint smile on her lips. Yeah, who's the blind fool? Her gaze was intense and direct. If she hadn't looked away after three seconds, I might have shamelessly suspected she was talking about me. Lisa changed the subject. My dad's health isn't great lately, and with grandpa getting older, they're pressuring me to get married. It's really annoying. You know how picky my dad is. He doesn't like many people. Mentioning uncle you made me shiver unconsciously. When we were kids, her family was the best off. Her dad was a strict, old-fashioned man with high expectations for Lisa. In today's terms, he was always on guard against boys. He was kind to me as a neighbor but left a deep impression. Lisa looked at me, her chin raised with a shy smile. Victor, do me a favor. Can you pretend to be my boyfriend? I agreed to help Lisa with this favor. It wasn't just because she had helped me act in front of Rena multiple times, but also because of the growing rapport we've developed in our careers over the past two years. In half a month, things progressed quickly. She introduced me as her boyfriend and took me to her home for dinner. The dinner went very smoothly. Her parents were even overly enthusiastic. Given the long-standing relationship between our families, their attitude toward my parents remained as it was. They even listed a lavish dowry, including shares in various branches of the group. 8. 88 million in cash and two villas. I held the list, my hands shaking. Grandpa you kept urging us to get engaged as soon as possible. That day, as we left Lisa's house after dinner, my phone rang. I was driving, so I couldn't answer. Lisa glanced at it. It's an unknown number. Should I answer? Go ahead. I said nonchalantly. If it's a sales call, just hang up. Could it be a private call? She teased, but didn't hesitate. Answering the call. Who is this? Oh, who am I? Naturally, I'm Victor's girlfriend. I don't know what the person on the other end said, but she replied affectionately. 
Hmm baby, don't mess around I'm on the phone. Miss Lou, Victor and I are getting engaged soon. We'll send you an invitation for the wedding. It was Rena again. Since the banquet, she had been calling from different numbers, repeating the same pleas for reconciliation. After hanging up, Lisa said softly, Sorry, I said those things without asking. But the smile tugging at her lips betrayed her mood. I said, You also helped me deal with this annoying issue. Father is already starting to prepare for the engagement. What should we do? It's just an engagement, not a marriage. She shrugged, her tone a bit cautious. Would it be difficult for you to get engaged to me? Engaging to the daughter of Yuxing Group, a childhood sweetheart, the girl who was my first crush. The sunlight streamed through the window, illuminating Lisa's face, making her look extraordinarily beautiful. It seemed like I was the one gaining from this. Besides, it was just an act. Seeing me silent, Lisa added, You can lead the new project and I'll give you an extra 20% of the profits. She invested 5 million, and I contributed purely through technology, with an original 50 to 50 split, which was already generous on her part. Now, she was offering another 20%. I shook my head with a smile. No need. Getting engaged to a beauty is already a win for me. Lisa laughed heartily. So, I played the role of Lisa's fiancé, accompanying her to various events, and in the process, met many important connections. Our interactions became increasingly intimate. Sometimes, her simple gestures like brushing her hair back or holding my arm made my heart race. As time passed, I sometimes found it hard to distinguish whether we were still pretending. Grandpa Yu was more eager than I expected and personally selected an auspicious date for the engagement party. He sent out many invitations to the upper echelon, and many people attended on the day. The engagement party was held in the rooftop garden. The carefully decorated venue had musicians playing beautiful melodies in the corners. Are you nervous, fiancé? Lisa in a champagne-colored high-slit dress, caught the attention of many men. You better treat our Lisa well, or you'll have to answer to me. Lisa's cousin jokingly raised his fist at me. Don't disappoint her. She's been in love with you for years and refuses to marry anyone else. His tone was serious, and he glanced at Lisa as he spoke. I looked over, and Lisa was smiling, winking at me. After he left, I whispered, Miss you. You should at least give me a heads up for such emotional performances. She covered her mouth, laughing even more. I really do only want to marry you. Throughout the evening, several of Lisa's admirers, filled with jealousy, came to toast us. Her arm, initially linked with mine, gradually slipped down, and she intertwined her fingers with mine. Unlike Rena's dry skin, her hands were soft, delicate, and smooth. Click. The sound of a camera shutter snapped me out of my thoughts. Oh. I crossed the line. At some point, Lisa and I had started kissing. She had her arms around my neck, hanging onto me. Her lips gently pecked mine. Over and over, seeing that I wasn't moving, she fluttered her eyes open slightly, revealing a complex emotion in her gaze. Maybe it was the romantic atmosphere, or perhaps it was the genuine blessings from our friends and family. With just one look, I was lost. Amid the tender moment, I vaguely heard her say, I've waited for this day for six years. You said even if he's handsome, you wouldn't like him. In the end, I still got you. Suddenly, I remembered. Six years ago, during that summer vacation, she came to me with two movie tickets. She said she wanted to watch a movie with me. At the time, we had a mutual crush on each other, so I agreed without hesitation. However, during the movie, she leaned over and whispered, Don't you think that actor is really handsome? He looks like you, and I like him very much. She had spoken softly, and her voice got even quieter midway through, so I didn't hear the part where she said he looks like you. She kept gushing about how much she liked him, acting like a fangirl, and it was driving me crazy. I finally couldn't take it anymore and said, Even if he's handsome, he wouldn't like you. What you're saying is really annoying. She pouted and glared at me, saying, Well, don't regret it. I'll never tell you again. Today, I suddenly realized she had been trying to confess to me all along. She had been indirectly expressing her feelings. I was speechless. In hindsight, I had been quite oblivious and somewhat of a jerk back then. After the engagement party, Lisa and I both posted photos in our respective social media circles. To my surprise, the center photo in her grid was one of us kissing. Red carpet. Flowers white dress, flaming red lips, and a passionate kiss, I hadn't realized I was that immersed at the time. Being the engagement party of Yuxing's heiress, it naturally caught the attention of many media outlets. Once the photos were exposed, various media outlets sent their congratulations. It even made it to the trending topics. The morning after the engagement party, Rena was crouching at my doorstep. I thought she was here to cause trouble again. Victor, I was wrong. Please don't break up with me. Abruptly, she said this. The fact that she would apologize, would lower herself, shocked me. In our two years of dating, every argument had her on a high horse. She would never admit fault, 
I didn't hesitate to try to close the door, but Rena blocked it with her foot, leaning half her body against the door. She held the door to prevent me from closing it. I was worried about hurting her. Rena, we've been broken up for over half a year, and I'm engaged now. You. Before I could finish, Rena suddenly leaned in. She buried herself in my arms, hugging my waist tightly. When I pushed her away, she kept coming back. Finally, she squatted by the door, clutching my pant leg and wouldn't let go. She cried messily, tears and snot all over her face. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's my fault. I don't want to break up with you. I thought you'd never get mad. I looked at the top of her head, so you kept testing my limits, right? Every time I proposed, did you find it funny to brag to your friends about how foolish I was? Did you raise the price again and again because you really wanted to marry me? In the past, I was the only one who cherished this relationship. So, no matter how hurtful her words were, or how excessive her actions were, I tried to meet her demands. Rena was silent for a few seconds. She raised her hand and slowly tightened her grip on mine. Isn't that what love is? If you want to marry a princess, you should overcome obstacles and pass tests. How could you turn around and get engaged to someone else? Hearing her say this so matter-of-factly, I suddenly wanted to laugh. What a fool. I was such a fool. Yesterday's engagement party put me in a good mood today. So, I didn't want to be rough. I was silent for two seconds, then looked down at her. Rena, it's impossible to get back together. So, stop bothering me. Rena looked confused, not understanding. Why? After lowering herself to apologize, would I not want to reconcile? She wiped her tears with her other hand, but I don't want to be apart from you. When we first got together, didn't we promise to always be together no matter what? We were just one step away from getting married. How could you give up? She squatted there, recounting many details of our past relationship. Things I had done for her. Back then, I did love her. Maybe even simp for her. But a relationship can't be sustained by one person alone. No matter how intense the love, it gets exhausted. Now, looking back, there's no happiness, only the bitterness of one-sided effort. I pried her fingers off one by one. Calmly, I said, I won't get back together with you. Don't come looking for me again. Looking at you makes me feel sick. Rena kept apologizing. Her crying was so messy she couldn't speak clearly. I knew Rena wasn't back because she realized her mistakes, nor because she loved me deeply. It was because the last banquet made her think marrying me could give her a better life. After a while, I pried her hands off the door. Leave when you're done crying. Rena's body stiffened, and the light in her eyes dimmed with my words. In the end, she kept repeating one sentence. The internet didn't say that. I responded by closing the door. The hallway was very quiet, and the motion sensor lights had turned off. Rena went from squatting to sitting on the floor. She stared at the gray doormat at the entrance. Originally, it was a style she liked. Fluffy pink, soft underfoot. She suddenly remembered when she first moved in. Victor kept the house very clean. She recalled reading online that to establish dominance in a boyfriend's house, one should redecorate it. So, she nitpicked, saying this or that didn't look good. Victor, being good-natured, indulged her, buying everything she liked piece by piece. The soft furnishings and decorations in the house were almost entirely replaced. He would smile and ask if she was satisfied. Rena was satisfied, but she always put on a displeased face, saying, it's just okay, what's there to be proud of? Go make dinner. She tugged at the corner of her mouth, thinking back. Those were happy times. As she smiled, her gaze fell back on the gray doormat. Rena suddenly couldn't smile anymore. That day, Victor had packed everything related to her into boxes. She had deliberately left some things behind, hoping for an excuse to come back. But the things she left were thrown out by Victor. She hugged her knees, feeling the coldness of the floor. Even her heart seemed to be frozen. Eventually, a neighbor on the same floor came home and was startled by her crouched in the corner. They contacted the property management to have her removed. Rena had nowhere to stay and had been living at her friend Maria's house. Maria's boyfriend complained privately about Rena freeloading but acted friendly on the surface. Rena, feeling heartbroken, sought comfort from them, blaming the breakup entirely on Victor. She had always had a good impression of Maria's boyfriend, and with his attentive care, she found herself falling for him. One day, Maria came home from work to find Rena in bed with her boyfriend. The men immediately claimed Rena had seduced him and slapped her several times. Former friends turned against each other. Rena was kicked out. She wanted to find Victor again, but she remembered him saying her presence made him sick, so she didn't dare show up in front of him. After crying for a few days, she started frequenting bars and nightclubs, partying until dawn, drinking herself into a stupor. A few times she woke up in a hotel, surrounded by used condom wrappers. She couldn't remember who she had been with, one person or multiple. Rena cried for a long time, recalling how good Victor had been to her. Since graduation, 
She had relied on Victor for support and had no job skills. She could only rely on her decent figure to seek love in nightlife venues. But her personality had been spoiled by Victor, and she looked down on those without money. There was no genuine love to be found in the nightlife scene. Some men used her and left, while others spent her money. Over time, Rena became more and more depraved, wandering from one place to another. Probably due to her many liaisons, Rena discovered she was sick. While waiting for an appointment at the hospital, she sat quietly in a corner. She suddenly heard the nurses talking about a newly listed company. Rena stood up abruptly. She heard Victor's name. Over the years, he had been doing better and better. The project from the industry exchange conference had been highly praised, and his startup was thriving. She thought Victor was just angry with her. Otherwise, how could he have gotten engaged so quickly? But the next year, they really got married. The news was filled with their wedding photos, and Victor looked more accomplished than when he was with her. Rena, like a voyeur, searched everywhere for information, trying to spy on his current life. Was it all an act? An only daughter from a wealthy family. How could she be so easy to marry? Victor must be worse off than she was. Probably just a superficial marriage. She prayed every day that her suspicions were true. That one day Victor would be kicked out. And if he apologized, she might reluctantly take him back. By chance, she heard that Victor would be giving a speech at his alma mater. When Rena arrived, the speech had just ended. Students with admiration in their eyes surrounded Victor. To cover her sores, Rena wore long sleeves in the summer, making her stand out in the crowd. Victor's gaze swept over her with indifference and detachment. He recognized her but looked at her like a stranger. Rena felt a sharp pain in her chest from his cold gaze. The next second, Victor's eyes softened, and he smiled, extending his hand. Rena felt as if she had gone from hell to heaven. Filled with excitement, she opened her mouth, wanting to say something to break the ice, but she saw a woman pass by her, and Victor stepped forward to hold her hand, leading her to the car. Wow, Mr. Yi's wife is even more beautiful than in the photos and her figure is amazing. Right, they grew up together, childhood sweethearts, and she confessed her love turned real, I believe in love again. The car's taillights disappeared completely, Rena's opening words were stuck in her throat, she didn't want to hear others praise Victor's wife, that position should have been hers. After a long while, she softly uttered the words she hadn't managed to say before, Victor, long time no see.